Hello, my name is Jessica. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my experience with applying for a blue badge. So I recently applied for a blue badge and I had my mobility assessment two days ago on Tuesday. Now I personally put off applying for a blue badge because I was really anxious about the process and so I wanted to share with you how the process was and try and calm any of those nerves that you might be experiencing. When I first came out of hospital and started needing to use a wheelchair, I believed that I was going to be back on my feet in no time and so I didn't think that it was worth the hassle of applying for a blue badge. But as the months went by, it became increasingly obvious that the getting better process was not gonna be as smooth and as quick as I had expected and that it would really improve our lives and make things a lot easier if I applied for a blue badge. Firstly, I'd like to give you a little bit of background on what a blue badge is, who is eligible to use one and how you use one. A blue badge is a parking permit that allows you certain parking privileges um, if you have a disability or health condition that affects your ability to walk. So a blue badge is available to people who are registered blind or if they have a disability or long-term health condition that affects their ability to walk. Um, that can be psychological difficulties as well as physical difficulties and it also applies to people who would be at risk of harm from either themselves or a risk of harm to others whilst walking. Additionally, as of the 30th of August last year, so 2019, they updated the eligibility to include people with hidden disabilities such as chronic fatigue syndrome or chronic pain. So how do you use a blue badge? Blue badges are used for parking in disabled bays or on street parking where there are either single or double yellow lines. However, a blue badge doesn't allow you to just park anywhere. You cannot park somewhere there is a loading ban, in a bus stop or in a residential permit holders only area. Furthermore, you can't park somewhere that it wouldn't be safe to and you must always adhere to the highway code. And there is a fine of up to £1,000 if you do break any of these rules. So it's really important to read through the rules thoroughly of where you can and can't park. Now, moving on to my personal experience of applying for a blue badge. So I started my application process on the 30th of January this year and I had to pay a £10 um, application fee which they would then refund if I was unsuccessful in my application. I went to the gov.uk website in order to start my application. You can apply from there if you are a resident of either England or Wales and there are links on the gov uk website if you live in either scotland or northern ireland and wish to apply for a blue badge so i started my application and it was very simple questionnaire asking for basic personal details name age that kind of thing and then also for details about my health conditions and my mobility now i know it can be a really stressful process to have to outline mobility issues that you have and I must say that I have found it really overwhelming in the past doing different health questionnaires but the one for the blue badge was not too bad. I, I didn't feel too overwhelmed or upset whilst I was filling it out and it wasn't as stressful as other ones that I have done. There is also an option to attach medical evidence 
um, just to help your council make a decision regarding your case and I did do this just to give them a little bit extra information about my mobility issues. So after I sent off my application I got an email confirmation from the council that they had received it and I waited a few weeks and then had a phone call from a company that does the assessments for my local county council. So they were really really friendly on the phone, they were so nice and they arranged a date and a time for a mobility assessment for me. So not everybody has to undergo a mobility assessment, they said on the website that if you have for instance a hidden disability or if they just need extra information about your personal mobility needs that's when they will request an assessment and I was really concerned about it, I was so worried but I really didn't need to be. As I said at the start of the video my assessment was two days ago on Tuesday and I was so so anxious going into it. I just had butterflies flying all around my stomach and could barely sleep the night before. So it was really bright in there which wasn't great because I had a migraine but the room that I had the actual assessment in was a lot dimmer so that was a bit easier. The lady who assessed me was an occupational therapist and I was able to bring my partner in for moral support which was good and also helpful because he was pushing my wheelchair so <laughs> I kind of needed him to be there. The assessment started with some basic health questions just about my mobility, mainly going over things that had been written in the application form, I suppose just to confirm that they had all the details correctly. And then there was a physical section of the assessment. So this included some very basic movements to demonstrate the range of mobility in my arms, also in my head and neck. Then it moved on to an assessment of my walking ability, which I was really anxious for. So as I said, I was in my wheelchair, but I had also brought my walking frame along with me because in my confirmation letter, they had said that I would need to bring in any mobility aids that I use. So I took a few steps with my Zimmer frame I was quite wobbly and I felt frustrated at myself for that because I wanted to be doing sort of the best that I could but I was really struggling that day. Um, so it was fine. Um, she did step in at one point because she thought that I was a bit too wobbly and wanted to make sure that I was safe. That is a really big thing to highlight. All of the physical assessment was by my choice. So she said at the beginning that I could refuse to do anything that I thought could be harmful to me or that I wasn't safe to do. So it wasn't too much pressure. I knew that they cared about my safety at the highest point rather than just wanting to get the assessment done and not worrying about the consequences for me. So after that, she took me back into the room and um, just asked if I had any questions and said that I would get an answer from the council regarding my application within about two weeks. So originally on the letter, it had said that it would be between 30 and 45 minutes um, for the assessment but in actual fact it was about 15 minutes so it was really quick for me. I don't know if that was because my physical assessment didn't go as well. Um, there was a very limited amount of steps I could take so they couldn't sort of assess my walking outside for example. But it was really stress-free to be honest. I don't know why I'd been so anxious. They were really nice and they clearly cared and just wanted to 
be helpful. So that was really nice. Um, so if you are worrying about that part of the application, really, really don't because it's going to be okay. It's not as scary as I had built it up to be in my head. So I was fully expecting my application to take a few weeks, but then out of the blue yesterday afternoon, so Wednesday, I received an email from York Council to say that my application had been approved and that they would be sending out a blue badge to me in the post. So it was really, really quick in getting a decision and overall, I wish that I hadn't put it off because I thought it was going to be such a hassle because it was really simple and easy and it's going to make such a difference in our lives and make my trips to the hospital so much easier because we'll actually be able to just park in the disabled bay. So yeah, if you are also putting it off because you think it's gonna be really terrifying or really stressful, take it from me. It was, it was okay. They were really nice and I would highly recommend just sort of diving in and applying for one if you are eligible because it will make a big difference to you. So I hope this video has helped and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.